Limbless Frenchman Philippe Croizon hit swim landmark. A Frenchman who lost his limbs in an accident has completed the first part of his challenge to swim between five continents. Philippe Croizon swam the Papua New Guinea to Indonesia with long distance swimmer Arnold Chastri and a local man who joined them to show him support. Mr. Croyson, who uses prosthetic limbs with flippers attached, took seven and a half hours to swim the stretch. He lost his limbs 18 years ago while adjusting a TV aerial on a roof. It was very, very hard, he said after the event, which involved crossing 20 kilometers between two points on New Guinea Island, which is shared between the two countries. It took us an hour and a half more than we expected because we had to swim against the currents, he said. He said they did not come across any sharks or jellyfish, but were joined by a Papua New Guinean man named Z Tamba, who swam with them to show solidarity, Mr. Croyson tweeted. The swim had been postponed as Mr. Croyson waited for a permit to enter Indonesia, which he received late on Wednesday. Electrocuted in 1994, he lost his limbs after receiving an electric charge of 20,000 volts, which fused him to the metal ladder on which he was standing. He would have been killed instantly, but another massive electric shock snapped him back to life, although he was so seriously burned that both his arms and legs had to be amputated. He says he was inspired to swim while in hospital. He saw a documentary on television about an English woman who had swum the English Channel earlier that year. In 2010, he became the first limbless man to cross a 34-kilometer channel between France and England, a feat that had only been achieved by some 900 other able-bodied swimmers. The other crossing he has planned are the shark-infested Gulf of Aqaba in Jordan to the Egyptian coast in June, the Asia to Africa stretch, the busy shipping straits between Gibraltar and Morocco in July, and the icy Bering Strait between Alaska and Russia in August. Non-Hispanic U.S. wide birth, now the minority in U.S. Children from racial and ethnic minorities now account for more than half of the birth in the U.S., according to estimates of the latest U.S. Census. Black, Hispanic, Asian, and mixed race births are made up 50.4 percentage of the new arrivals in the year ending in July 2011. It puts non-Hispanic white births in the minority for the first time. Sociologists believe ongoing economic slowdown has contributed to a greater decline in birth rates among white people. The U.S. Census Bureau recorded 2.02 million babies born to minorities in the year July 2011, just over half of all births compared with 37 persons in 1990, sharp diversion. U.S. birth rates have been declining, but the drop has been larger for white people. There is a sharp diversion between the older population and the young population that is foreign to them. The number of white births have fallen by 11.4 percent since 2008, compared with 3.2 percent for minorities, according to Kenneth Johnson, a sociologist at the University of New Hampshire. William Frey, head of demographics at the Brookings Institution, said the data presaged a new set of challenges to the U.S. in years to come. There's a sharp diversion between the older population with votes and the money and the power and a lot of needs and the young population that's foreign to them and with whom they have no personal connection, he told the reporters. As population changes, the U.S. will see an inevitable decline in the numbers of whites in labor force. Mr. Frey said, adding that better pathways to education were needed for the changing demographic groups. In its analysis, the Census Bureau found that the national median age rose slightly 37.2 years and the number of people in the U.S. who are 65 or older increased by 1.1 million. 
to 41.4 million. There are now 5.7 million people who are over the age. We'll move on to the business world. Facebook prepares for dollars 100 billion share sale. Facebook shares will begin trading in New York on Friday in one of the most eagerly anticipated share flotations in recent stock market history. Demand is said to be high as this week the social networking site said it will be selling 25% more shares than planned. The sale is expected to value the company at around dollars 100 billion the same as internet shopping giant Amazon. But questions remain about the firm's ability to generate profits and take advantage of mobile phone platforms. There are also concerns that once the company has answered to shareholders, there may be a greater emphasis on advertising to generate profits. The actual share price will be announced later on Thursday. Earlier this week, the company indicated the price would be between $1.34 and $1.38 a share, with about 421 million shares up for sale. Sir Martin Sorrell talks to Roy Celan Jones about the value of Facebook. This will represent one of the highest value share sales or initial public offerings IPOs in US history. Welcome to the world of science. Paralyzed patients use thoughts to control robotic arm. Two patients in the United States who are paralyzed from neck down have been able to control a robotic arm using their thoughts. It allowed one to drink unaided for the first time nearly 15 years. The technique described as a journal nature links a sensor implemented on the brain to a computer which translates electrical signals into commands. In years to come, scientists want to reconnect the brain to paralyzed limbs to enable them to function again. The project was a partnership by Brown University and the Department of Veteran Affairs, Rhode Island, and the Department of Neurology at Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard Medical School, Boston. In 2006, in a previous Nature paper, the team showed that the same neural interface system could be used by a paralyzed patient to control a cursor on a computer scene. I couldn't believe my eyes when I was able to drink coffee without help. I was ecstatic. I had feelings of hope and a great sense of independence, Kathy Hutchinson, a steady patient, said. The key is a tiny sensor implanted onto the surface of the motor cortex. And in sports! London 2012 Olympic Flame handed over to UK in Athens. The Olympic Flame has been handed over to organizers of the London Games at a ceremony beneath a rainbow in Athens. The president of Hellenic Olympic Committee, Spiros Kapralos, passed the flame to Princess Anne, president of the British Olympic Association in the Panathenaic Stadium. Lit in Olympia on May 10, the flame was taken on a week tour of Greece. A British delegation including David Beckham are due to fly with a torch to UK on Friday. It will then be carried 8,000 miles by 8,000 bearers in a 70-day relay ending at the Olympic Park. The relay begins at Land's End on Saturday when Triple Olympic Sailing Champion Ben Ainsley will be the first to carry the torch on British soil. Now, before we close today's bulletin of news analysis, let's have a recap of the main points. Radko Mladic's war crimes trial postponed over evidence. Bangia shares plunge again on worries over finances. Shah Rukh Khan defends scuffle in Mumbai. Disco singer Donna Summer dies. 
Limbless Frenchman Philippe Croizon hits swim landmark. Non-Hispanic U.S. white birds now minority in U.S. And there we end today's bulletin of news analysis. Be with us in the coming weeks too. Thank you.